Hey, hey, what's going on, sports fans? This is Sean with Boxing Social and Other Sports here with my co host with Ahmed. How's it going? How's it going, Sean? How you doing tonight, man? Oh, uh, man, so far so good. Me and Ahmed was just talking. We're just, uh, I was watching the game, but Ahmed is bouncing back and forth looking at James Harden, who left the Houston Rockets, went over to the Brooklyn Nets, and we're going to talk about James Harden's legacy. But Ahmed, I got a surprise for you and the guests. So I told I told Ahmed earlier, I said, hey, we're going to hop on at 8 o'clock. And I said, Ahmed, give me 15 minutes. Do you know why I needed 15 minutes? Why? Because that's all the time it took for me to put together this intro video for us. Check it out. Good. Wow, that's nice, man. That's I actually, nice. did, I actually I like that. did that. Like I did that in about seven minutes. I like that, man. I like that intro. Yeah, so I get that'll be our intro and our outro going forward. I knew people would like that. I man, there's there's like so many that. there's so many people I wanted to put on there, like Sean Kemp and Gary Payton and, and so many others on there and Shaq and others, but you know, I gotta keep the intro kind of short, but no, it's nice. I like that. I like that. So you really gonna be shocked when I throw the one up for the NFL intro? I did, I did it all. Oh, you got that one already? Yep. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give people a little sneak peek. Uh, but I'm gonna play it again during the NFL. All right. Oh, Sean, you're outdoing yourself, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that was done in 15 minutes, both of those promo videos. I like that. I like that. Just real quick, I'm 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 catching the uh Brooklyn Milwaukee game. Tell us about uh, it. Brook Brooklyn is up by seven, man. Eight minutes left. So uh, you know, we you know, we were just about to talk about Harden and his legacy here in Houston and um, uh, you know. And look, I feel and, before, like... and, and before we talk about it, man, let's back up a little bit. So okay. a lot of people don't know that for those of y'all that, that are probably new and probably 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, just so y'all know, back in 2009 when he joined, he did his first three years at OKC. And for all y'all young people that don't know, believe it or not, it was Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. Yet they were That's a right. young team, didn't have chemistry, didn't really know how to play together at such an uh, early age. Can you believe that those three were together at one time? Oh, man. Three MVPs. Three MVPs on the same team. Uh, it's and, just and, it's and, unbelievable. And, crazy, and look, and here's the crazy part. It was just this last year that he got Russell Westbrook to come back with him, and it was almost like – <laughs> they couldn't stand to be with each other. Like they're both do ball dominant person, and, but now you got Harding with KD, but he's fine with KD. But it's something about Russell Westbrook. I don't know if it's the alpha male in them or what. You know, I you know Russell's a great great player, and I I don't want to demean him in any way. You know, he he averaged a triple double in back to back seasons, but you know even in even in OKC, you know. uh KD left Russ, you know. I mean, Harden was traded. That wasn't his fault. KD left Russ, and so right. it, it's it's hard to play with a guy like Russ, man, who's so ball dominant. And uh, you know, KD had mentioned you know sharing the ball and ball movement and things like that, which you know he went to Golden State and you know he saw how how their offense worked and it led to two two NBA championships. So it worked out for him, but. Just to think, all three of those guys were on one team, one team. Yeah. That's and, that's crazy. And and um, and of course, KD uh, actually left and went to the Golden State Warriors, and everybody was just upset about that. But hey, he got his championship rings. Now he's trying to do it again with Brooklyn. But we're here to talk about James Harden. Fun fact: Did you know that James Harden is an NBA all-time leader in fifty-point triple doubles? 50 hey. point triple doubles. <laughs> you know what's funny, Sean? You know what's funny? I I'm I'm watching I'm I'm reading these uh, you know, these these media guys now after this trade 
talking about, you know, oh, we didn't know James Harden could do this, and we didn't know he was such a great passer, and this and that. And I'm like, were you guys not watching the NBA the last eight years? I mean, look, say what you want about James Harden outside of the basketball court, but he has always been able to produce on the court. Maybe, you know, there's been times in the playoffs, I know, you know, he's come up short, uh, you know, every time, but he got us to that point. You know, he, he got the Houston Rockets to that point. And, and for that, I think, you know, his legacy will be remembered as that. He, uh, he's, he's somebody that couldn't get us over the top, but he did enough to keep us in the hunt for all those years. I think, and, I, and, I think that's and, and, and I'm at, and there's two things that people fail to realize when they talk about James Harden coming up short, right? Because I hear the same things, but let's look at this. Just like you said, they talk about, well, we didn't know that James Harden could pass the ball. Well, it's not that James Harden couldn't pass. He didn't have nobody to pass to at the Rockets. I think the well, only person he really kind of trusted was P.J. Tucker. Like, if I dish it off to him, P.J. in the corner is going to hit that three. And number two, I think he came up a little bit of short because, because he didn't really have nobody to pass to, and I think he didn't really trust too many people to hand the ball. He had to put in overtime work. And when you're playing playoffs – every other day, every other day, and you're dropping 40 and 50 and you're just tired and exhausted, you're going to burn that out to four or five games and you're done. Yeah, no, look, don't get me wrong. The Rockets don't have the talent that Brooklyn has with, you know, eventually when Kyrie comes back. But there was a couple years, 2017, 18, 19, uh, you know, he had our 16. You can go back to that, that time when he played with Dwight Howard. And then again uh, in 2018 when he played with uh, Chris Paul, that team had the best record in the league. I mean, they were yeah. they were literally one hamstring away from making the NBA Finals. <laughs> so, you know, to say to say that he didn't have anybody to pass the ball, I don't know if I'll agree with that. I mean, he had he had his team, and then even last year, you know, Russell Westbrook. I mean, that's who he wanted here. He, you know, Russ was a MVP. How many guys can you know can say they played with another MVP? So, I think on this year's team, this year was almost. It felt like a rebuild, you know. You had you had D'Antoni gone, you had Maury gone, mm -hmm. you traded Russ for John Wall, so you kind of felt like you were starting over. So I, I can see on this year's team saying he didn't have anybody to pass to, or he didn't have anybody he could trust that he could pass to. So, but I would not say that in years past. Well, I I don't know. Well, I don't know what else to say about why he couldn't get them over the hump then. I just felt, you know, when I looked at him, like he's like, man, I got to do this, you know, by myself. He didn't have that Batman and Robin. He didn't have that Clay Thompson there. You know, no, he didn't I have mean, that other person. Sean, of the, of, of the the entire time that he was here, he had one all-star play next to him. You, I mean, you could say Dwight Howard's an all-star, but he was coming off the back injury. He was coming off a... Uh, a pretty bad, you know, short stint with the Lakers, with that whole team with Nash, Kobe, Pau Gasol that, you know, didn't work out. He left as a free agent to Houston. Uh, and then you could say Chris Paul, but Chris Paul was, you know, he was older in his career, had had flamed out in the playoffs uh, many and, and times. He's, and he's an injury prone. Everybody always he, talked about, every year. you know, they, 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 they just knew that he was going to get hurt somewhere in the playoffs. And they didn't know right. what game it was going to be, but he always gets hurt in the playoffs. I call That's him. Right. Listen, listen. Uh, my friend cracks up laughing, man. It wasn't until he joined the Rockets that I really paid attention to him. And even though I'm right here in Houston, I told my friend, I said, man, I got a nickname for Chris Paul. I call him Shorty Dirty. I mean, that <laughs> dude was dirty. I didn't realize how dirty of a player he was until he came to Houston. I'm like, I'm like, I'm trying to root for Houston, but this guy's straight up dirty, right. man. Look, man, I hated Chris Paul when he was on the other team. He was dirty. He was always, you know, flopping. And, he, you know, you just hated guys like that. But then when he got on our team, my team, it was like, oh, you know what? <laughs> you, know, I, I, it's, you know, I can live with this, man. You know, this guy plays hard. You, you know, you start making excuses for him, you know. Right. Like, and look, oh, and he, it, you know, he's not so bad. And look, and, I'm at, and my friend pointed this out, right? When, when Russ came here, right, I was expecting big things, right? Two things yeah. I told you the other day. I said, Ahmed, I said, man, Lakers went to big boy ball. They had like four yeah. big centers that was blocking everything. And when they played against the uh, Lakers, man, they blocked him so many times, man. He could build a Lego, Lego block, uh, build a block, right? <laughs> and my friend told me. That was me, a I bad was, matchup. And, and I told yeah. him, I said, why isn't he hitting jumpers? 
He said, Sean, have you noticed that Russ can only drive in and dunk in a laid right. up? He said, he cannot yeah. shoot. And I kept watching, yeah. and I watched every game, every game. I was like, he's right. Russ can't shoot. I mean, he can That's run right. down and jam it. He can lay it up. He can rebound. But as far as uh, – just like I didn't realize that about Rondo. Rondo is another one. Great player, but just, yeah. can't, just yeah. can't shoot. That's right. Just has not been able to shoot a square, you know, and and that's another thing. He's he's starting to you know get a little older, starting to uh, lose his athleticism. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's going to be hard for him uh, these next few years and all the way to his career unless he develops a little bit of a sh uh, jump shot, because that's the way the NBA has moved to. You got to be able to shoot now. You know, uh, uh, speaking of uh, shooting, you know, we were um, we were talking about um, you know trading James Harden and right. uh, Ben Simmons' name you know, had, had come up in uh, the trade with Philadelphia. Yeah. And the one thing about Ben Simmons is he's, he's a great athlete. You know, he's can't a big shoot. guy, he's young, but he can't shoot, you know? Right. Are, are you going to build a franchise around a guy that can't shoot? You know? Uh, Matt, and Matt, and I want to ask you this. I don't understand. How do you even make it to the NBA without being a shooter? Oh, man, How? he's, look, look, he is very talented. Don't let me. Well, don't not let him, me just any, shoot. just any, look. no, just any NBA player. How did they make it to the NBA like Rondo and him and and Russ and all these others that, that just can't shoot? How did they make it to the NBA without being able to shoot? Look, Sean, he's 6'10". <laughs> he can handle the ball. He's athletic. He's got great, he's got great basketball IQ. I'm not saying, look, he's an all-star in this league. He He's still a very good player, but man, he just, he just can't make a jump shot. He just... Uh, you know what what happens, Sean, is when you come up through the uh, the youth ranks like AAU and all these, uh, you know, other, uh, you know, Elodia, things like that, you know, these leagues, him just being physically bigger and more talented, he didn't have to shoot the ball. He, he you know, he was getting to the basket every time or, you know, he was, you know, shooting, you know, two or three foot jump shots or, you know, layups. He didn't have to. Or, or or he was dunking on people, you know. He was six ten, right. six eight, six nine, six ten. So he dunk. didn't have to develop that shot. Dunks and rebounds. Dunks and rebounds. He, you know, he was laying the ball up. So you know, you can do that for a long time until you start playing with guys that are, you know, your same size, and then all of a sudden you can't, you know, you don't get those layups and dunks and rebounds. Right. So and, uh, I, I and, can uh, see how he, he came up, but you and know, I'm you mad. let me ask you this. With COVID hitting, right, and a few times already, they had to put in a lot of bitch players. I swear, I mean, I'm looking at these guys like, how do you even make the NBA? Like, I'm looking like you made the NBA, <laughs> hey. but you're playing like you play at the YMCA. I don't get it. Sean, these guys are super talented, man. Don't 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 let that get you, man. I remember, I you know, there's a story I'll share. Okay. Uh, we were at uh, Lifetime Fitness. Uh, oh man, did my did my screen go off? Yeah, we can just keep going. We can still hear you. Okay, we were at uh, Lifetime Fitness, and um, th and this was like back in uh, maybe the the late nineties, early two thousands, uh -huh. and uh, it wasn't even Lifetime Fitness. I believe it was like a twenty four hour fitness. And uh, we saw uh, a Rocket player in there. Uh, his name uh -huh. was Bryce uh, Bryce Drew. He uh -huh. uh, the Rockets had taken him out of Valparaiso. He hit that big shot in uh, in the NCAA tournament, and yeah. he was just out there shooting around and stuff. Uh, and then we asked him to play a pickup game. Sean, when I say he made like twenty twenty five uh, shots from <laughs> half court in a row, yeah. I mean, he he like he would never miss. Oh, like wow. he. he, he he wasn't even playing hard because, you know, he was obviously playing in the pros. But, you know, over here, we're thinking about this guy. Man, how you know, how did he get in the league? You know, he, <laughs> he's so slow. And, you know, but, right. man, these guys are super talented, super skilled. They, they just, uh, they it just, just doesn't they, I show. Guess, yeah, I guess in my opinion, they don't look as good when you're playing against other big superstars that can, like, right, that right. really big. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, man, click yeah. on your, your cam mic again. See if you can switch. You can't there we you go. Go. You're back there. I have no idea what happened. Okay. Did, did, it switch, did it switch away or something? I think so. I think how did so. You, how did you get your video back? Uh you know, you know, I think I just clicked on uh stop cam and then it popped back oh, up. Okay, and then play so, cam again. Okay. All right, yeah. so let's wrap it right here. So Harden's like, what did it mean to the Houston Rockets? Because a lot of people are upset that he left. 
I mean, but he did. He, he put Houston on the map. I mean, before James Harden, who were we really paying attention to? I think the last one was Tracy McGrady, but at that point, he had tons of back problems. Oh, yeah. Tracy left out. You know, a lot of people forget Tracy left out here on bad terms, too. He had kind yeah. of quit on the team, and, you know, he had some injuries that happened over the years. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like I said, breakups are hard. It's hard towards the end of your career. Uh, you know, the last chapter of your career. And, and, and for T-Mac, when he left here, that was almost like the end of his career. You know, I know he yeah. bounced around for, you know, a few more years, played on a few other teams, but he never really got significant playing time after that on the NBA team. He he was actually on that Spurs team that, um, I don't know if you remember that that uh, Miami and uh, Spurs series uh, where where Ray Allen hit that uh, that three-pointer in game oh, six. Yeah, yeah. T-Mac was on the other side on, on the Spurs bench. He thought he was about to get a ring. Yeah. And then Ray Allen hit that in game six and then the Miami Heat went on to win game seven. So he never, yeah. you know, he never got that ring, but he, you know, he didn't play a lot after he left. But right. speaking of Harden, you know, the Rockets, the Rockets got him uh, during, you know, which I thought was probably the greatest move Daryl Morey has made as a, as a general manager. And, it, you know, that may one day get him into the Hall of Fame, depending on how he does with Philadelphia, right. you know, wins any rings or you know, how, how he fares over the next years. But for James Harden on the Houston Rockets, he was everything that we had asked and more. The only right. thing he didn't give us was an NBA championship, uh, you know, but we should definitely feel like he he accomplished a lot on, on this team. And he should definitely be remembered in a great way. Uh, I feel like he was spectacular. He, you know, he he was a Olympic uh, Olympic gold medalist the the year we got him, uh, and you know he he went on to win scoring titles. He went on to win right. the MVP. Uh, in the um, eight years he was here, the Rockets advanced every single season in the playoffs and twice get into the Western Conference Finals. He was first team All NBA five times. He finished number two in the MVP discussion three yeah. times and then eventually winning yeah. MVP in, in, in 2018. So for all that, you know, he showed, he showed the Houston fans, he showed NBA fans. It was just, it was just a new style of basketball that I think a lot of the NBA kind of, uh, you know, took on. Right. I mean, you know, James, he, he, he kind of shaped the league and, you know, the way it's played aside from like uh, Steph Curry on offense, because right. you know he became the you know the main focus on the perimeter shooting and driving to the basket. James perfected his step back three, the Euro step. He was able to find himself, you know, during um, you know a time in Houston where you know we haven't had a team really seriously contend since uh, you know Hakeem Olajuwon was here. And right. you know, on top of that, James Harden was very durable, never right. missed games. He right. never missed games. You know, yeah, we live played. in an age where load and, management is big. Yep, and, and was in, always 2000, in 2015, 16, he played a whole 82, 81, 72, 78, then, of course, 68, but everybody played it just a little bit last year. But, yeah, he – um, yeah, he, yeah, for three years, 80, 81 games, 82, and 81. I mean, imagine going three years and only missing two games out of three years. That's right. And, you know, we live in an age of load management. That's crazy. And uh, it just, you know, for for us as Houston, Houstonians and, uh -huh. and and Houston Rockets fans, uh, you know, we enjoyed it for those eight years. It, it was a, it, you know, it, it's bittersweet watching them now. I'm, I'm watching the Brooklyn game and, oh, man, this is coming down to the wire, Sean. Yeah, man, I got a question for you. In the last yeah. four years, what's the number one thing that, and this is a quiz for you. What's the number one thing in the last four years that James Harden, um, um, what's the word I want to use? Perfected. The number one move he perfected. I'm going to say the step back. He perfected the step back. Or, or I mean, you can go the Euro step. You know, I know uh, Spurs fans may hate me for this, but, uh, you know, Mono Ginobili was known for the, you know, the Euro step, but 
James Harden perfected that. He perfected the step back. It, it, everybody is doing the step back now. Everybody. You you name you it. Know you know? I, I, I knew you were going to say those two things. But you know what I think he perfected? I think it was pretty what? I'm not going to say he didn't perfect those. I think he was pretty good at that. He perfected, and, and, and you can look up the stats. He perfected drawing the foul. Oh, that yeah. He went to yes. the free throw line more than any. They even said more than any other player in the NBA. That's I true. mean, he, he true. just perfected. He, he just knew how to get in the right position, go around the right pick, and draw the foul. Nobody went to the free throw line more than him for like two or three years in a row. He perfected that foul. And, and they're like, that, that people are like, you got to be kidding me. I didn't foul him. And he, that dude could draw the foul, man. He, I mean, he just contorts his body a certain way. He's yeah. able to get the defender off balance and he's yeah. able to draw fouls. You know, that's something that goes so underrated. You know, I know yeah. pe- uh, teams used to get frustrated. He uh-huh. was just so good at drawing fouls yeah. and getting to the free throw line. So, I mean, was, he had at least you know, points a night just off free throws easily. It, yeah. Yeah, the 15 I, night I, exactly. Throws. Exactly. He, I mean, people are upset now, Sean, you know, he's gone and, you know, he kind of left on bad terms, but I think we look back in a few years and, you know, really appreciate his greatness here. I think yeah, we he, really appreciate what a great player he was for the Houston Rockets for those eight years. And, and we'll end it on this note. Did you see after he made that statement, he said, I didn't mean it to sound that way. Boogie Cousins came out. Hey, what you mean talent wise? We ain't. But yeah, oh I, yeah, man, hey, you can't mess with Boogie. I heard, I heard a lot of Rockets took offense to that, man. Yeah, you you can't mess with Boogie, that. man. Boogie yeah. takes you know takes everything personal. <laughs> no, I I just think the way uh, you know it it was a new team. It it was a new team for Harden. The only players here that uh, were around during you know you could say the you know the high point for him was um, Eric Gordon and PJ Tucker, and so everybody else is gone. So. And, and guess, mean, who's tonight, guess who's starting tonight? Guess who's starting tonight? Guess who's starting tonight? Victor Oladipo. Oh yeah, yeah. Tonight is his first game. We'll have to, we'll you know, we we'll have to do another segment on, and uh, you know, his this new, uh, you know, they call it the Wow, uh, John Wall, Victor Oladipo, and uh, Christian Wood. The Wow, the new fact. Uh, uh, okay. The, the new Houston Rockets. Oh wow. Okay, I like that nickname. Yeah. All right, man. Once again, I'm mad, man. Thanks for being a co-host, hopping on tonight, man. I hope y'all, I want y'all to leave y'all comments and thoughts down below about what James Harden legacy meant to you also. And um, until next time, me and I'm probably going to pick up our next segment um, sometime this week. And we're going to talk about the Houston Texans, the Sean Watson, J.J. Watts, all that. And and what, what is happening to Houston Texans this year? Until next time, we signing out.